So I think Singularity is way more comfortable making rotations, covering for weaknesses, covering for allied team deaths than the side of Flavia Felix. So that doesn't mean Flavia's draft can't work. It's just they are not allowed to make as many mistakes as Singularity, which is a frightening thing going up against number one seed Singularity. We load into the first map in this quarterfinal. Cheeky, okay. Kasi, Kasi, good heavens. If the Gara puts creep in that bush, then she will see this, but she's not going to be in time by the looks of it because she's too busy focusing on XE, as a good laner should be. But where's Grimmie? You see four versus three. You don't worry about Grimmie. Yeah. I mean, she's playing extra carefully here while he got actual value somewhere else. Now there's going to be Hellbats on the tower. They're going to armor debuff it. And like I said, it's going to be Malthy or Grey main top. It makes sense they're using that. But I didn't expect it to take quite this nature with the Hellbat snipe. And that works out really well for Singularity. Very sneaky. If I'd looked at that mini-map, as I'm sure a majority of players who looked at that mini-map, they would have been, no, Grey main, he's probably doing their, he's probably doing their Hellbat camp. Nope. He is now here as Blade takes a lot of damage from the silence, but Kasi still there to be camp and picks up first blood. But heading oh. is finished off by the fell flame, and Kasi has bitten off far more than he He's trying to escape, dodges the pustule, and just maps up and leaves. <laughs> Malthael is attempting his own push with a very small Zerg wave, but also with a set of the uh, Goliath camps here with that, that Raven. That helps a lot. That's going to help push a little bit, but he himself will get targeted by every Hydralisk on cooldown. And it will drop low in life, and he doesn't have the self sustain to stay there for too long. So, as much as he's soaking XP and pushing a bit, he won't be able to do that much. And you see that poison damage? That's level 4 talent. And Venom Spikes, 300 bonus damage on an auto attack. Lovely poke there. He's also got the increased Baneling numbers with his level 7, the Baneling Massacre, giving him even more wave clear potential, allowing him to clear up this mercenary camp. But the Ford survives. The front wall mostly survived even Gara here. And now it is a simple situation of can Slavia move out without losing too many members here? A candlelight will certainly drop, but can they also get Stukov and Hanzo? Hanzo is in a really rough position. They even got the Stukov, and down goes the Hanzo as Muji sneaks around, clearing out minion waves. Hydra dances back and forth because he's very far forward and without that Tormented Souls, he's a lot more squishy than he would normally be. However, a beautiful knockback, but the Dragon's Arrow for the candle Boom. will kill off the Muradin here, getting its first stack as Candlelight also will go down. Cobra, <laughs> up, actually putting it in good position to try to knock Cobra back there, but it was too far. That's suffering in that solo tank there due to that wonderful extra radius on the Lurking Arm. Level one by the Stokov, but a beautiful start. The dragons are to try and counter. Not enough to kill off Ekriel here with the last rice this time, but the tire will. Doesn't even need to come here, so now it's just chasing Hanzo. Where'd he go? He tried <laughs> to jump over the wall, couldn't. <laughs> Still drops a lot of damage onto Gunter though, making it much harder for him to join this fight as Cobra is getting focused. Hydra will easily finish him off. Ancestral keeps Carthy alive, and if they can pick up one more, which they will easily do, Hydra will take a lot of damage from this fort. Not enough to take him down. He can port back, sustain up, and this gives an easy rotation to Singularity to take that bottom altar. Yeah. Not altar, uh, sorry, beacon. Beacon. That's right, it's currently on one stack, so pull down reduction there. Horrify is used, but it doesn't look like it's really going to be enough to pick up any kills. In fact, Candlelight shall be the one to drop even through the Dragon's Arrow. Flailing Swipe to give some the time to escape. Last rights, not killing Muradin yet again, and Hydra very nearly dropping down, but is able to escape. Tire for extra value, chasing down Stukov, but his heal will be enough, and it actually dies to power shots. Rip, taking too many shots there from the keep means that indeed he can't use it. It would have been enough if, to kill Stukov if it had landed a little bit earlier on top of him, but there was no opportunity to do so. It was, you know, Junkrat took a chance at life, and it didn't work out. It's fine. Big push happened here. Yeah. We have now a fourth lead, good level lead by Singularity. And probably the play for them would be to gently control the map through various mercenary camp pressures to buy enough time for their level 16 and then either set up a trap, push straight on, or make a play for the boss. Looking for Blaze here, but even with the silence, they can't finish him off, but they're holding the point. Malthael looks for an angle, but doesn't want to get separated. The engagement onto Muradin once again. Dragon Arrow is wow. good, and Blaze gets annihilated thanks to the Horrify. Ikaros also able to leap over the wall and escape. Candlelight is doomed. Taken out by the last rites. 
Man, Ross oh Rice looks God. legit. So does Karchi. <laughs> 1v3 and he survives! Wow. Oh my god, Carsey! Turns it round, picks up the kill, gets healed up, and survives getting out thanks to the knock up of Nuti, preventing Muradin from landing the final blow. Wow, fantastic. Living with 1% of his life, jumping in the midst of everyone in an engagement that started out very well for Flavia Fee. It has a less cooldown than a release Phoenix, leaping into the Horrify, which hits no one candlelight, getting spread, volleyed, barely survives. Ekarel able to escape though, but here comes the tire, makes it in, but does not land the finishing blow. Big catapult build up here, it's going to deal serious core damage. The Zerquake isn't even here yet, keep goes down, Team Singularity all but won this game already. And there, uh, it's just the death animation here that's uh, at stake. But this is going to be GG. We see the zoning being if it, if just any attempt to zone away from the core here. If they can just find one isolated member, they might have a chance. But it's looking so unlikely. They're turning around. Look at that cannonball spread volley. Cobra getting zoned by Carthy here. Ekerel leaps away, gets a double leap with the rewind. But with the Zerg wave here, the core goes down. And that is GG. Game number one goes over to Singularity. And Alex Strasser does have in, well, non-existing frames, let's call it that, when she transforms to and forth from Dragon, but she can't True. do it reactively when a chain is about to pull her, as there is a wind-up. That invincibility is like for something a second later, not during it. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get excited yeah. about this. Kelt is out yeah, on the left, Karsi, the grey main who could, the little grey man who could, Jumped in against four <laughs> last game, survived, and made a number of casualties. Just on your queue, you get five. Oh, wow! Did you oh, see that? Oh, what? I did that was, see that candlelight. That, that was, was incredible. Fun. Able to teleport behind Rem, uh, Renella while the chain hit, preventing Renella or Sylvanas, because she was in our unstoppable frames, being pulled into the chains. Yep. Being pulled into the root there. What a move. Yeah, that was really funny. Uh, by the way, Kel'Thuzad did not grab Glacial Spike. He is purely going for the multi-hero route or using enemy buildings. This is much harder to get uh, combos uh, in, out in the open, but it's still fine when you're sieging or when you're using multiple enemy heroes against each other. Anas rotates back down to the bot lane. With that bottom fort already destroyed, it, they do require a little bit of wave clear down there. However, top fort now in a little bit of trouble. As such, Muradin has rotated up here along with Gunter here. They're looking for Hydra. Dragon Queen is rocked here, but they're putting a little bit too much focus on Hydra, and that will probably mean that this fort will die here <laughs> due to the lack of wave clear that they actually dropped onto it. Hydra, like you said, will die, but they sacrificed the fort, putting too much focus on his death. Five players, Dragon Queen, lose both <laughs> channel, you lose the Dragon Knight, oh, you lose the fort wow. to get a single kill. That is the most heroic sacrifice that I've ever seen. What a tactical feat by Hydra. I mean, this was a five versus three and they lose only a single hero and gain everything else, Tetra. The fact is, so that's going to be very helpful. Time traps are landing over and over. Thanks. And Bunker to dance around as the Dragon Queen allows this push to continue. Another chain onto Murdered, who pops the Avatar to keep himself alive. They push forward, they have Mercenary Cap. It's very slowly going down. They're about to run out of things that will allow them to dive this. As in from behind comes Tyrrell and the Greymane, who moves forward into the sanctification to keep himself alive. And Muradin will be the one to drop. Gunter with nowhere to go, no bye bye. He's going to rely on time traps to get himself out, but he's got nowhere to go. If only you had bye bye. <laughs> it's always that situation where why don't I have timeouts and then when you have timeout why don't I have bye bye but timeouts more valuable in more situations yeah exactly why can't I have it she's got 56 out of 60 stacks on her sand blast charge not able to chase down chromie traps being a great delay to all the material shield though being good protection against this chromie damage candlelight haunting waves away from danger Level 13 is now available. Will Sylvanas go for that unstoppable version of Sprint to keep herself even safer? Or will it be the standard Windrunner? It's going to be the standard Windrunner. Wind not buying into that talent as much as I think you might be right with that. In the meantime, Dragonite gets whittled down to quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, will do some keep damage, but they won't be able to get it. Just one hit on the creep. 
And here there we go. It is. And down goes Sylvanas. Jennings taking out time out. We'll keep good through alive, but he's still finished off. Cleansing Flame, not enough for the healing. And with two heroes down here, we may see a keep set. Oh. Three heroes down. Let's make that as they move forward onto the core. Literally, the second Kel'Thuzad came online. He completed his quest on the crowd control setup and used it himself with his ult immediately being empowered with that bonus ability power. The second Karsi came online, he destroyed two targets, three targets with it. They get the triple kill. Oh, there we go, oh another kill, Karsi. He doesn't get to play Kel'Thuz at full power for long, but it secures the kill. So I guess that's kind of okay. Singularity with the 2-0. Thank <laughs> you.